right, there we go. All right, so very nice that we could lead into this talk with some um, string and uh, and uh, some reflections around that because we will actually use string for something here. And uh, combined with testing, actually. So let's get started. So, hi, I'm Lars. I worked at a Norwegian company called uh, Nordkat as a dev lead. And I'm here today to talk about my experience with uh, Verify, a testing tool, uh, library framework for uh, .NET. And hopefully give some inspiration for some of you guys to try it out for yourselves. So, short introduction. I work with data that is related to maps and to taxes. That's at least part of it. And uh, I work with code that it's at least moderately important that we get things right. Well, at the same time, it is sometimes a bit complicated, at least to me. So, it is complicated enough that we might get things wrong which means we need good tests. So let's talk about Verify. Verify is a .NET tool for writing tests. Uh, it is very useful for testing complex structures, uh, documents, big objects, stuff like that, images even. Uh, and it's a so-called uh, snapshot testing framework that it, um, works through instead of um, checking for stuff, you just write it down to a file, and then you check if uh, the file is the same as uh, before. It's an open source uh, library that is, uh, in my opinion, uh, very well maintained and very well documented, and I particularly like this getting started wizard on the GitHub page, which uh, leads you through how to set everything up according to your preferences, whether you're on Windows or li Linux or use Visual Studio or something else. So this is a common way to structure your tests. You arrange something, set everything up. Uh, you do something with uh, what you've set up, run some code, check uh, some things, and then in the end you check if uh, what you got back was what you expected. But at least for more complex data structures, this uh, last step can be a bit cumbersome. So that's why we replace it with a uh, Verify. So what is Verify? This is just a quick, small example of how uh, things might look. Um, this is a very simple example, so just imagine there would be a lot more going on first, but we have some data that we just verify. And what, hap what happens when we verify it? Well, the workflow looks something like this. So we've written a completely new test, and we run it for the first time. Well, we try to compare it to what is written um, in the file, and there's nothing there, so the uh, test fails. And then we get to accept that change, and you know, a new baseline. So that step might look something like this, shown in your favorite um, tool to difference uh, uh, files. How does this look if we have a run this test later, and there hasn't been any changes to this data. Well, we run the test. We compare it to the baseline. There's no changes. Well, we have a running test that works. But what if something has changed? Well, there is a difference. The test fails. You get shown the difference, and you can choose to accept the new baseline. Something like this. And again, if it's not the meaning that something has changed, then you have to reject it and fix your code. All right, so let's do something exciting. 
let's jump into the editor. Everything, everyone can see just fine? Cool. So we've just set up a very small example here. Uh, there's a property, and not like in the coding terms, but a real estate property in the real world. It has an ID and an address with some fields, um, a number of bedrooms, bathrooms even, and uh, the last time we visited this place. So, and then we just to showcase and have some more code. Just imagine there's a lot more going on here. We got uh, this building we're here at now. That's on Yannis Pass too. And let's just imagine there's uh, three bedrooms and two bathrooms here. And we last visited it right now. If we jump over to our tests, don't worry too much about the syntax, but we just fetch this example property and uh, we compare it to something. Well, what we expect it to be. And then we just do an assert, check if s something is similar. So this is like how we would do it as a unit test, perhaps. And uh, we can already here see that we, well, this ID is wrong. It will be different. And the same will be the last digit time. So let's just fix that right now. And while this might seem like a small thing here now, we always, when we write more tests, get more data that we need to keep up to date and uh, might end up using more time writing our tests than our code. And uh, imagine if this property uh, grew over time and went became something that is much more complex to this relatively small example here. Well, we could also do like the simple assertions that we just check some fields or check if a list is X amount of um, items, but then we might miss some other bug that is introduced to the code. Now, how does this look uh, as a snapshot test we do verify? We just fe fetch the property and then we verify it. Quite simple, right? So this is basically what we do in our production system uh, for most of our endpoint facing uh, code so that we can just guarantee, have a last check that we return something similar to what we checked before. Because sometimes it's not important to check whether a value is two or three or all slow, but to check whether it's the same as it was before. So how does this workflow look like when we run it? Hopefully the first time we run it this time, or else I've not cleaned up everything. Well, you don't see it right now, but uh, on a bigger screen, you would probably see that your test failed and we get, for my case, just Visual Studio Code, where we see something new, uh, where we got some data compared to nothing. And uh, as you see, the library scrubs out some problematic types on its own, like the grids and the daytimes. And we can just do like this, save, shut it down. And as you see, we have a failing test if we run it again, we have a working test. And that is basically what this tool is useful for. So imagine if we, well, we've been here for a while, two bathrooms, perhaps it's more like 50. And then we run the test again. And this can be integrated in your workflow uh, and your build pipelines and stuff like this, you check in the um, the baseline with your code. And here we can see two has become 50 and we can decide whether this is correct or not. Another example is that 
imagine this code base has lived for quite a while, and we have this ID field in our property data, and it seems it's not specific enough. We want it to be a specific kind of ID. So we rename it properly. Property ID, perhaps. And just refactor it. And that's great, because it also fixes our tests. So we don't have to look at them again. And yeah, let's just change this back to two, because if not, our unit test we didn't uh, update, so let's run that. And we can see that the unit test passes. Great stuff. But if we run the snapshot test, well, it would fail on the 2 and 50 thing, but uh, we would probably see something else as well that the name of the field has changed as well. And imagine if this structures is something you store to a database or send to your front end or something like that, then we probably have some breaking change, which the tests of the usual kind didn't catch. And sometimes it's a good thing that you don't have to update your tests. Well, sometimes it's good that it's caught like this. So I encourage you to combine these two approaches to together. Finally, let's just see. I've shown you some F-sharp code. Ju would just like you to sh uh, see that you can do just the same thing in X unit and N unit and MS tests or any part of this ecosystem. It actually has quite a lot of plugins um, that makes you able to combine it with any workflow, basically. And if you are more concerned about your EF core library and what kind of requests it sends from your data, well, there's a plugin for that so that you can verify that the requests under the hood are the same when you upgrade your version or something like that. And uh, yeah, I think that was it. Thank you.